What a Japanese summer transfer window heads into its final week and our director of football is trying to be busy. He's not got the gold dust yet. We have got a goalkeeper but he's not made much of a difference and today we've got tricky opposition yet again. Yes, hello and welcome along to part three of this FM24 head coach story with me, Daniel. We are back today with FC Gifu for transfer deadline day in a summer window. And we've also got a big game away at Imabari, the same opponents we held to a nil-nil in our first game. They've got their goalkeeper out injured, but we've got a few problems with injury ourselves. We've also had a pretty frustrating window so far, albeit there's some positive news for the longer term future. If you want to know what I mean by all of that and you're looking forward to this episode then please do put a thumbs up on the video. I hope you're enjoying the series. If you've missed any of it you can find the playlist up in the eye above. You can also find the South End series there. The latest episode of that was out earlier today. But for now we've got to turn our attention to what's happened in the window so far and results because as you can see quite crucially we are outside the bottom two. We got our first win in charge as you can see at the top right of the screen. It was followed by a pretty heavy defeat at home. A very weird set of games and a few injuries that are causing us problems. Let's start with the fixtures, albeit there's one new face in there. You knew who it was going to be already. So let's see how we got on since you were last here. Two games, a big win and a big defeat. Very strange fixtures because they were all pretty even games to be honest. Yokohama was 7th place in the league. We went away and won 4-1. Ironically, the goal we conceded was a goalkeeping howler, and it was a debut for our new man, who we were excited to get. But after that, we went on a bit of a scoring spree. We bought an experienced player off the bench who scored a penalty late on. After Endo had scored from a set piece, Yakita had got his first under my management, and Seko had scored yet again. Against Ehime at home, though, a mid table side, we were absolutely battered because the goalkeeper was poor again, didn't perform to his best. And we didn't take our chances, which was a bit frustrating. A couple of injuries, Seko being a key one, because he seems to be the goal scoring threat. And he is also subject to some of our transfer news. We've got one very good player who's agreed to join the club in the future, and three players that have agreed to leave. One of them is Tomohiro Seko, who is our left winger. Yes, he's 35, he's getting worse, he's declining physically, he's had injury problems as well. He has been our main goal threat so far, so I'm a little bit worried about that on paper. There's a couple of youngsters going out, and loads more that have left the club already. But the one that we've pre-agreed for next season, if we can stay up, it's going to be our first foreign slot filled in the squad. Because Adi Inka Najim is a 23-year-old Nigerian playing in Bangladesh, weirdly. But he's coming as a right back. He's four and a half star ability by our standards. I feel the scouts might be slightly overrating him. But the one thing we can definitely guarantee is that he's a damn sight better than what we've got at the moment. So I'm really looking forward to him joining. Next season could be one of those to help us push on. We did try and get a centre-half for the end of the year as well. The director of football tried to sign Nahuel Espinola. He rejected us, but would have been an upgrade at centre-half. And at least he has been prioritising the positions we're weakest. The one that he's going for now is Velasca, who is a left-hand centre-half, would definitely play centre-back if he came in. I think he's coming on a permanent deal, but would definitely improve our team. He's also six foot three, which given our Japanese defence and particularly the left centre half at the minute, would be a massive, massive signing for us. So let's hope that one gets done. A free transfer and cheap wages and crossing everything that that'll happen. A few players going out there, as we mentioned, and also a lot that have gone in this window. Let's firstly cover the few that have come in, though. Tomoya Wakahara was the goalkeeper we were very excited about last time. He has come into the club. He's been awful so far. He's played two games. He's been at fault for two goals. He's made one absolute howler. He's not been great at all. But maybe as he gets settled in, he will improve. He looks like he's going to be a good player. And he's still better than the last keeper we had. But we can't keep getting those individual mistakes. The other ones that have come in are both youngsters. The first one, Soma Arakawa is a 20-year-old winger who's not very good and doesn't really have potential. The second one, though, is a 15-year-old, and his name is Koji Origuchi, with big potential, and to be fair, big shoes to fill once Seko leaves at the end of the year. So, an eye to the future, 
Defensive signings have been tried throughout, but not always successful. We have, though, sold a lot of fringe players for little sums of money. The director of football so far is on six. The first of those was a man he accepted an offer for in the last episode. He was someone we'd not even featured in the first team. Has gone for £7,000 to Imabari, today's opponents. Yuta Okamura has gone for 3500 He was one of the many backup strikers in the reserves. Junya Tanaka, we didn't meet him on the first episode, is a very good player, but well over the hill and wasn't capable of playing regularly. So here's another one who has moved on. He was 1500 A 1000 deal for Daisha Komoda, who was nowhere near first team level. Go Nakamura went for free. He's 36 and not very good. And Shu Mogi was one of those young one and a half star keepers. He has gone out for £12,000 and adds to the money we've bought in this window. So a little bit frustrating because I can see the director of football trying to do the right things, but we're missing out on people. And I don't know whether it's a reputation thing. I don't know whether it's players staying closer to home, a location thing if they're from abroad. And I don't know if it's just competition from other clubs. But at the moment, we have been frustrated a little and we are waiting to see if others will come in. So that is going to be the big news ahead of the window closing. It is due in what, three or four days? Let's have a quick reminder. We go down to the window, Wednesday afternoon it closes. So we're going to get through this game today and then hopefully we're going to see some chaos because we still need a couple of defenders. Let's have a look at the team we can put out today though because this is going to be a pretty tricky game. We're fortunate that we're only really playing a game a week so there's no need to rotate or anything along that lines. But this is the team we have been going for and I'm feeling a couple of tactical tweaks today. The first one is going to be the goalkeeper Wakahara. The previous role was set for what we had in goal before. I'm going to try Wakahara as just a goalkeeper because we have got enough pace at the back to deal with it. And actually the squad's a bit smaller now. Rio Kabota is back from injury after a few weeks out. Can we get him on the bench anywhere? Probably in place of Fasono. And I feel it just gives us a little bit more versatility because he can play right back if need be. We've also then got Kusumoto, who is now training as a striker and gradually getting there. We just need him to find a goal. But for now, we're happy with where we are. We just need to replace Wada, and then I feel we'll have a decent season. This is the team in full then. Wakahara up between the sticks. Ugajin and Fujitani, the fullbacks with Endo and Wada at centre half. Ichikawa and Sumi, the holding midfielders. Karata, the number 10. By that first game we played on camera at the start, he's been pretty poor for us, to be honest. Fujioka's in for covering for injury on the left. Kita's over on the right. And Kenze Akita is through the middle. Four goals is our top scorer this year. We could really do it with a little bit more. Let's go and get into the game and see if we can find some goals. Well, Imabari might be without their regular goalkeeper tonight, but they've still got that Polish centre forward who we know can be very deadly in front of goal. Top scorer in the league, but the pressure's all on them. We've got confidence in our number 10. We're going to drop to a balanced mentality because we're away against a better side. And they've got a nice little ground with a few fans in, actually. Let's go and get through to the first half of this one and see if we can get a good performance. We've got the league table up. We've got their formation. Not that that's that helpful at the moment. We probably want to look at latest scores because we are in a battle whether we like it or not. Kasumi has got the ball at the back for them and they look confident in possession. And as I've mentioned, we've basically, bar the man who's covering injury, Got an all over 33 midfield. We've not got that high pressing or intensity. And we've got the same problem at the back again. Bizchek is a big Polish target man. And we've got two Japanese centre halves who, with the greatest of respect, one can't jump at all. And one of them is trying to mark two players. And he's only five foot ten as well. It's not an ideal start to the game, this, and it risks becoming a long afternoon. Yes, it's not one of the games that's going to keep us up. There's no doubt in that. But I am looking at next season. Remember, automatic promotion is the goal. And if we don't get it, we're at risk of the sack. That could be a big problem. As Miyamoto gets the ball up into the box, headed away. When is the last time we got sacked in our first job? Was it FM19? I don't think we've been sacked in the early years since then. As the ball's cleared away, Karata will chase it. We look second best here. I can't lie to you. And you think back to that first game, if we'd scored that early penalty... We nicked a 1-0 in that one. It all could have been so different. But now we are defending for our lives and we're already a goal down. Sakurochi gets to the byline. Ball in again. There's your man up front. He scored two in 29 minutes. He's still the top scorer in the league. 
and we're sinking here. We're really struggling a bit. I'm hoping this is going to be a big four days. We need to improve this defence. And to be honest, we need a bit of youth in the attack. We're, we're not a great squad. I was really excited back in episode one. Do you remember that? All the way two days ago. I was so excited about getting this job. Had a big reputation club, great facilities, a good infrastructure, good finances. But the team is all over the shop and we're going to have to do a lot of work here. Because your man's got a hat trick already. And defensively, we are all over the place. We can't play in a sort of balanced, symmetrical tactic, which I like doing. We can't compete defensively. And the worst players on the pitch are getting found out here. The fullbacks, the centre-halves, they're really struggling. Not having a sweeper-keeper seems to be harming us there as well. I don't think we can blame him for any of the goals today. They've been clinical, they've been quality. And in essence, they've got a League One or Championship quality striker up front against the National League South team. The outcome is inevitable. As here they come down the right-hand side, an hour on the clock. Curling effort just over. At what point do we make the subs here? I think we're going to go now. Because Fujitani, one yellow from a suspension. Ichikawa playing poorly and on a yellow. We'll bring on Kabota for him. And we'll switch those two rounds. Sumi as the deep liar. Defensive mid on defend for Kabota. I might as well, in a game like this, bring on my striker. To get him some game time up front. Because that's the only way he's going to improve. He'll come on as a poacher there. We're going to go for Keita off. Replaced by Kubota. Who will come back from injury. Rio Kubota that is. And then defensively. I'm going to take Endo off. He's been that poor. Replace him with Kawakami. 8 jumping reach and 5 foot 10. What can go wrong? Uh, the other option is a left winger. And do you know what? I'll do that as well. He's our best homegrown player at the club. We might as well improve him. We've got 25 to go. We've been absolutely battered away at a very decent team. And the sooner the full-time whistle goes without any further damage, the happier I will be, to be honest with you. We stay in 17th at the minute, but we've played more than everyone. And I'm looking and thinking, when are we going to get the luxury of playing some of the teams around us? I think the lowest place team we've faced are probably a Hime. Oh, you're joking. You are joking. Oh, this game is so cruel. Now, I don't think, in fact, I'm trying to remember, when is the last time I had a goalkeeper injured during the match? There's a reason I don't have goalkeeping substitutes, and to be fair, it wouldn't matter here because we've made them all anyway. I mean, we've barely got a six-foot player. I doubt we've got anyone who can do well in goal. Bear with me while I trawl through the numbers. We'll be back in a minute. Right, despite being five foot nine, Takuya Sumi is one of the only ones who has got a free rating, so he's going to go in goal. It will mean Kawakami into midfield. It will mean Fujitani centre half and Kubota right back. The other guy right midfield. In fact, we can just leave them like that, can't we? It's an absolute disastrous finish to a very bad day. And if that injury ends up being bad, we're basically back to the squad we started with, minus five or six players, which is not an ideal situation. We've given the ball away on the left again. And the sooner this final whistle goes, the better. We play five or three added on. I appreciate there was a goalkeeping injury in there. I'm not sure we're learning anything from carrying on as they get in. Oh, what a save. What a save from Sumi. You could be the number one, son. That's the best save I've seen from any of our keepers so far. What a save from Sumi. There you go. There was a positive to finish off. He'll probably make a howler from the corner now. Oh, he's claimed that as well. We've just seen possibly the best goalkeeping performance for a long time. And it was from our centre midfielder in stoppage time. Not happy with the result. Not happy with the performance. But very happy with that save at the end from Sumi. Cheered me up, I can't lie. We've got four days till the transfer window closes. We need big work from the director of football. We're going to go and see how bad this goalkeeping injury is. And we'll be back in a moment with any transfer news. Well, this is interesting because there's nothing here about the injury. However, it says he was forced off with torn wrist ligaments here. Oh no. He's out for eight weeks. Why have we not got a message about it? Is it because he's a lone player? I don't know. That's a disaster though. The one place we've improved and he's out for eight weeks. We're back to the other goalkeeper again. The backup to him has been sold as well. We might end up being shorter keepers now. I mean, I suppose it doesn't matter given Sumi's performance, but that is not a particularly ideal situation. Let's go and have a look at Akita. Felt we were too harsh on the team. 
I didn't even pick the one as harsh as the assistant recommended. I mean, come on, mate. Grow a pair. You were a bit harsh towards the team and I'm concerned. You lost 3-0 and didn't even compete. I mean, I'll say I'll approach things better because I think a couple of you have mentioned it in the comments. We're a lower reputation manager than this club. And it could be a problem if we turn against people. We're not going to get the backing for it. I have noticed in the games at the moment, seems to be one thriller a week and then lots of low scoring games. I don't know if you've all got the same. But we'll get through the press conference. We've got four days to go. Director of football, please help me. And hopefully that Brazilian lad comes in. Well, it's 11.30 on deadline day and we've got three very different bits of news to start us off. The first one, as you can see on the screen now, is the bad news because for last, that centre-half who I was desperate for has rejected us again. You can see Hiroki Izumi, our director of football, has made another offer straight above it. Let's hope that's for an equally good centre-half or potentially another goalkeeper. And then the third bit of news is probably the best news at the minute because Rio Kabota, a couple of days ago, got an end-of-contract offer from another club in the nation. But he's also been offered a new deal by the director of football, and he is one of the biggest potential players at the club, and one of the few good midfielders who isn't over 33, so very useful for us to have for next season. Not sure why he's not homegrown at the club. Oh, because he only joined a year ago. That would explain it. Let's have a look at who this offers for then. Murakami. Kishi Murakami. He's a 20-year-old who's not ready to play first-team football. I mean, why? Why now? Do those deals in the middle of the window. You don't need this on deadline day. Yes, it's a position we're short, but, I mean, come on. That's not ideal for the moment, is it? Can we just take a moment to appreciate this, by the way? Nine appearances, 4.79 average rating. Not for a loaded league, I'm not surprised. That's astonishing. But at the moment, if that's all we're going to do today... I am going to be furious. All of these new AI transfer updates and we could end up with our worst transfer window in years. Let's get ahead and see if we've got another Chris Casper on our hands. Well, an hour and a half later and I may need to make an apology because our director of football has come in for a centre half, but it is an end of contract deal. Now that happened a few times in FM23 and then they did the deal now. So I'm hoping that will happen on this occasion. Takumu Kenmotsu is two and a half star ability left footed six foot two and can actually jump i mean this guy is an improvement on what we've got i wouldn't say he's ideal but he's a reserve in a second tier club and he would improve what we've got in our defense so if we can get him happy days but for now we need more director of football get to work well it's 3 15 and deadline day is finally hotting up we've got two new signings that have come into the club firstly the youngster who's not going to feature for a long time we're not even going to worry about him Kenmotsu has agreed to join the club. Has that deal gone through yet? No, it hasn't. It's going to go through on the 1st of February. Oh, look, there's a buy now at the bottom right. I'm so tempted to press it. So, so tempted. Let's see who this guy is first. Offer made for Yamiba. He is a three-star centre midfielder on loan. Very decent player by the looks of it. But I'm not quite sure that that's what we need this afternoon. Unless this guy is also a tall, accomplished centre-half, he looks like he's someone who we don't really need and shouldn't be prioritising today. He can't play there. He's not better than the two holding midfielders we've got. I kind of see the logic now, though, to be fair. He's been playing in the second tier for most of the season. He is a decent player. He's got a few assists and maybe would be a decent player for the bench, but I would quite like a bit better defensively before you go and sign decent midfielders. Well, Masaki Yamiba has joined the club. It's only 4.30, so I'm hoping we'll get a fair bit more done after this. But it does look like we've got a decent player on our hands. Maybe it allows us to change shape because we're not getting much out of a number 10. Could we go to a more traditional 4-3-3? See if that has any impact at the club. I don't know. A bit more left-footed balance in midfield too. A good player, but I'm not sure if he's the solution. What I really need though is in the next seven and a half hours to get a couple of good defenders. Will you please get to work at it? We've been bought back at 8.45. There are three inbox items and one of them better be the signing of a centre-half. It's not. We've got a very good young left-back coming in and to be fair, doesn't look that far from first-team level. Might well get some action for us before the end of this year. But it's still not what we need, is it? Great that you're preparing us for three or four years' time, but I'll get sacked before then. 
We've now only got five and a quarter hours remaining. And technically, as it stands with the goalkeeper injury at the weekend, we are no better off than we were at the start of the window. And in fact, we're about eight players worse off. Right, we've got a big offer by the looks of it. Right back to Narbe from Kawasaki. Looks like he's going to be our man. I can see the offer there. I can see it's been accepted. And he is a fullback. Yes, on the right, we're a bit better than other positions. But I'm not going to complain at this point. We just need to improve. We've got a right back coming permanently in the January, haven't we? So we just need to get this guy done. Tanabe is. Oh, he can play centre half and left back. Right. We might be in business now. Three star ability, five star potential, three grand total loan fee, 10 jumping reach, five foot 11, natural right back, natural centre half, accomplished left back. Yes. He's probably better as a right back, if we're being honest. His attributes suit it far better. He's better crossing the ball. He's better in a tackle than he is in the air. And he's fairly quick, but not that strong. But given what we've got a left centre half at the minute, I'm not going to complain if we get him. He will be in the team immediately. And I would love to get that deal done. So Tanabe, yes, please. That would be a fabulous deal. We're not going to get involved in any contract discussions. We always walk away from them. And Inabari look like they're coming in for him as well. He is the current homegrown at the club player. Unfortunately, he might well be off. But Tanabe could be the good news signing today. Let's hope that that gets done. Then I might breathe a little sigh of relief. Albeit we've still got no goalkeepers now. Well, we're definitely not getting a second game in, are we? Because Shuto Tanabe has joined and there is now another offer, which I'm hoping will be a good one. Tanabe is going to be a big, big addition at centre-half. Massive signing to have. And he's going to have to play as one, I'm afraid, because we've not got any option to play him right back. Unless Kawabi's a brilliant centre-half. Seko is going to welcome him. And hopefully, well, he suggested someone else. He didn't want to do it. But what that signing has done has meant that Ichikawa has dropped his minor complaint about the fact that the squad wasn't strong enough at the back. But to be fair, I couldn't argue with that. We've got a new player who's committed his future. That is the right back we're training as a striker. And by next year, I'm confident he's going to be a good centre forward for us. But now we've got to focus on this man. Four hours to go. We've got an offer for Kawabi. Please be a goalkeeper or centre half. He's not. He's a 15 year old left back. And again, not what we need at the moment, and not as good as the left back we signed before. This is starting to get Airbus vibes about it. We can't be doing with five deadline day left backs, please. Do I need to be harsh here or not? It's half ten. This will probably be the final edition of the day. And again, it's a very good one for the future. But if this guy's natural position is a left back, I'm going to get furious. It's not. He's a centre half. And in fairness, he's not a million miles away. But at 15, he's five foot seven, and that needs to change. He's not the best player in the world, but he's got big potential. So another good young signing. I'd really like one more in the first team. We've got one good lone midfielder, one good lone defender, and one good lone goalkeeper who's now injured for the year. Can you please try for one more bit of gold dust? Because we've got 90 minutes and I'm hoping that you can deliver me one more bit of help. Let's go and see if anything else happens. It doesn't look particularly good from where I'm sitting. We have got no more news. The Japanese window has closed. And the J-League 3 window has been an interesting one for us. We've got a couple of very good players coming for the future. Did not expect to see Viborg on that screen, sorry. If we go to the transfers, there is some good news for the future. And if we go to the transfer history, the players that have come in this month have been a bit of a mixed bag because our goalkeeper started badly and is now injured for eight weeks. That leaves us with a very big problem. But on deadline day, lots of signings in. Keishi Murakami was a very poor right wing back. Yamiba was a good centre midfielder, but probably not the player we needed at the minute. Maybe we'll consider a change of shape because of him, though. No. Ken Segura was a pretty good young left back, but one for the future rather than for now. Shuto Tanabe was the star man, on loan from Kawasaki, a right back and centre half, and far better than anything we've got. So he is going to start in central defence, and hopefully. That'll be the end of us seeing that centre-half who can't jump, who keeps costing us goals. The last two to come in were youngsters again. Kawabi, a left-back with big potential. And Komet Suzaki, who is a young central defender. Again with big potential, but not much at the minute. So they're the players that were in. We've had loads out already, with a few more agreed for the future. But it was a busy deadline day, wasn't it? Maybe not quite what we were hoping for. But a couple of players that can help us over the line this year before we get a big reset in the winter. I'm a little bit worried about the homegrown situation for next season, 
But my first primary worry should be staying up, shouldn't it? Because we are back down to 18th place, just one from safety. And we have got a big run of games towards the end of the year. I'm going to come back about halfway between now and then. I'm trying to look for where the big games are, but we'll judge it somewhere in the middle based on how the league table looks and how we get on in our next few games. Of course, our biggest worry is that we are now back to our one and a half star goalkeeper off the back of 3-0 defeat successively, and we have got to find a way to get safe. It is the only objective for this year. We have got to survive in a J3 league, and currently we're only two points away from returning to the bottom of the table. So if you're looking forward to seeing how we get on the rest of the year and whether we can push away now with one good addition in defence, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know if you think we're in trouble or do you think we're going to be all right this year? We know we've got quality coming in the winter if we survive, but are we going to manage to do it? I'll be interested to get your thoughts on that. Let me know how you're going in your saves as well. If you want to stay up to date with this one, we'll be back tomorrow at the same time. And subscribe and turn that notification bell on. A reminder, we'll be back before then with Southend tomorrow morning. You can find the latest episode and the playlist up in the eye above. There's also links to the Twitch channel where we're streaming every day during the beta. And so much more including the football podcast. I wouldn't say I've yet noticed a huge increase in intelligence from the director of football. But we'll judge him again during the winter. Hopefully we'll survive to see it.